Hi folks, thanks for joining me and this is a brand new exciting series. It's called What Happened at the Resurrection? Ask yourself a question. How much preaching, teaching have you heard on the resurrection of Jesus? Ask yourself a question. When you became a Christian, was it because you heard the gospel of the kingdom taught in relationship to the resurrection of Jesus? There's a lot of stuff in the church in relationship to the cross, i.e. Jesus died on a cross for us because he loved us, he took our sins, etc, etc. But in reality, in church life, that teaching is usually born out, you're saved by grace through faith, saved by faith through grace, saved by grace through faith, and that, but you have to keep yourself by works. Well, that's why lots and lots of Christians, maybe you, are one of them, whereby you just keep on thinking, well, am I saved? Am I really saved? Uh, I love the Lord, but, you know, why do I feel this way? Why is the doubt in my heart, in my mind? Well, this stuff that I'm going to teach you is going to put an end to all that. And it's what happened at the resurrection. So, guess what I'm going to say? I'm really big on this. Get your Bible. Okay? Let's, let's get the scriptures open. And we're going to read from John chapter 1. Because the first thing we're going to look at is why or what is the reason for the incarnation of Jesus. Let's, let's read from the scriptures, shall we? And the Word, this is John 1.14, and the Word became flesh, human, incarnate, and tabernacled, fixed his tent, his life, his flesh, his body, and lived amongst us. Here it is. And lived amongst us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty. Such glory as the only begotten Son receives from his Father. Now it's very important this one, okay? Full of grace and truth. Loving kindness. Now the reason we're hitting this stuff, what happened at the resurrection, is to show you literally why Jesus had to be made human. Why the pre-incarnate word, as he lived in heaven, the Trinity, the Godhead, had to be made human. But I want to clarify something for you first of all, because there's a lot of stuff in church and conferences called the glory of God. Some who are in great error are misrepresenting the scriptures and saying the glory of God is going to appear in our meetings like a fire, like a cloud, like gold dust, like all these things. Well, strangely, this never happened on Jesus. Strangely, Jesus never had a cloud of fire over his head. Strangely, he never had oil and gold dust coming from his body. Strangely, he never had, uh, what should I say, uh, manna provided for him. Because this is a different time in the scriptures. And it says he tabernacled amongst us. That means he dwelt amongst us. So you have got to understand, we've come from Old Testament Moses, and as Gentiles it bears no relationship to us anyway, now that we're Christians, but Jesus was a new kind of tabernacle, a new kind of flesh in that sense. It says, he fleshed, dwelt amongst us. So, what's the first point I want to make on what happened at the resurrection? And I've got my notes here. The first point is, he was incarnated. God, who is a spiritual being who made man in their own image and likeness, with flesh, with bones, with blood, had to become like the human race. Now, this word incarnation simply means this, was made flesh, dwelt amongst us. Now, this is the word I want to pick up on, because this is the, the, first, the first session. He says this, he was begotten, the only begotten of the Father. Now, what is this word begotten? 
born, firstborn. Yeah, but the Greek word means something rather amazing. And it is this. The Greek word is monogenes. I probably haven't pronounced it properly for all you Greek scholars who are out there. Monogenes, one of a kind, never to be repeated. That's amazing, isn't it? One of a kind, never to be repeated. And you have to understand, when you go into the book of Hebrews, you'll see it. That Jesus was made in the likeness of human flesh, without a sin nature. Because when we were born, we were born with a sin nature. The genetic stuff that Adam passed down to us has got the sin gene in it. And Jesus wasn't born with a sin gene. Even though he was tempted, he wasn't born with a sin gene. Now, it says he was the only begotten of the Father, the only Son of God. Interesting, yeah? One of a kind, never to be repeated. And that's the first thing what I want to pick up on what happened at the resurrection. Jesus first had to be made one of a kind, without sin, so that he could make us of the new kind that would come from the resurrection. Now I want to say this to you. Now you're a Christian, you are of a new kind of race, a new breed, a new person. You've got a new kind of DNA within you. You've got the new creation man gene within you. And Jesus had to do some amazing things for that to happen so that we could be born again. So what happened at the resurrection? First thing that happened, Jesus had to be made flesh so that we could be made into a new kind of flesh at the resurrection. Keep watching this stuff because it's going to amazingly bless you. God bless you.